Hello. What's up? Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Phil? Yeah, not bad. That's it. That's it. What's happening? Just uh, a sec. Okay. Okay. Ready. Yeah, so what's going on, dog? You all right? <laughs> yeah, not bad. I'm uh, keeping busy. No. I can see that. Look at that. You've got the camera ready. You've got the flowers ready. <laughs> yeah, it's like I've set that up on purpose. Oh, okay. Which I haven't. But I, I see you've been producing a lot of uh, vids, like on what, just YouTube or on, and TikTok or where else? Yeah, well, like the idea was to do it on on uh, YouTube, but yeah, like not not a lot of people use YouTube. Like family and friends don't really, or they use it for different things. They don't use it regularly. So I'm like trying to. Oh, I'm using like Instagram and stuff to like try and filter people towards the my channel. Ah, okay. Kind of working, but slow. Which which has been your most productive thing, TikTok or Instagram or? Um, probably Facebook because that's where everyone go. That's where everyone finds the videos. I think. Ah, okay. Yeah. Cool. I like your your set. <laughs> What set? Which one? Behind you. <laughs> Behind you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of things. You can have a look if you want. Here we go. Yeah. I'll put it in gallery view so you can see it. Here we go. Here we go. So, no, it's, it's, it's effectively, um, yeah. I've been put in a situation because of the coronavirus where I'm back, back in London with the family. I'm guessing you're in the same boat, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm with my mom. But it's, uh, to be honest, I probably would have, this probably would have happened even without the virus. Oh, okay. Like, I probably would have just done this anyway. Fair so enough. It's not actually affected my plans at all. Just made them a lot, just, they just brought it about a lot sooner, eh? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it made it easier. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Well, everyone was all shocked. I mean, I was all sort of surprising, and everyone all stood outside in the school, waiting for you guys to finish your last play. <laughs> it was all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's. Uh, I. Uh, yeah, I was a bit disappointed not to finish the last week because it was um, just because we'd like put so much work into it and then yeah and I actually yeah and like I had something good in the show as well so I was like <clears throat> I had to do that about four times to get it into the show and it finally got in and then two days later the school closed <laughs> it was yeah how, how was it behind the scenes like as, so i'm just gonna let people there's not gonna be many people listening to this probably one or two people but effectively what's going on people who will listen to this if you've got nothing else better to do this it, might be for the future people when we're we'll famous they'll look back on this and yeah, they will yeah say oh like they're terrible at interviewing and they can do they'll be able to do the same thing yeah that's true that's true you know they'll say oh my god these two sexy men were terrible interviews but now look at them yeah <laughs> um behind the scene well on the day on sunday when the school closed like philippe came in and he was um he did sort of a rousing speech saying he, there's no way he's going to close the school and on Monday morning, he's going to go to the police station and like talk to them and tell them there's that he's not closing the school. And Mitchko was was like, Philip, uh, we we are closing the school. We cannot stay open. We have a phone call from the mayor. He said we have to close. And uh, Philippe was like, okay, but I'm not for it. I'm not for it. Yeah, so, and then it. So, for anyone that doesn't know what, what me and Phil are on about, effectively, me and him go to the same sort of clown school in Etomps run by the famous Philip Golio. Um, if you want to know what he's about, just imagine uh, he's like a, like a boxing train, train at the nose, everything, but roast you as you do terrible on stage. It's, it's a big theatre school, some very famous people went over there, and then you've got the gorgeous me and Phil over there. And effectively, the coronavirus has preempted. We were meant to be there till till June, but it's brought us back to England much sooner. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, are you going to go back? If uh, if you can go back, I don't know. It's a bit of no. I don't think so. Not because all the all of my dependence and like being able to pay everything off was on the tour guiding and running shows really. So without oh, okay. that, so that would have to open. And you'd, you'd have to get the job back. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's, I mean, I, I'm, I know, I watched that news conference with Macron and he said that he is going to, um, he's, he, he suggested that he may lose some restrictions at open schools. And Philippe is very set on this and I think he will open the school if that happens. Yeah. But if there's not enough people, if the border's closed, then I don't think they can run the school if there's not enough people. It, there's only about 20 people there now. Like there's a, they're still in Etomps. Everyone else is all, all back at home or where they're from. Yeah. So I don't think they really can they? I don't think so. It's a bit... It's. Yeah, and it just won't be the same. I'm just intrigued to see what's going to happen with the school because it, it providing hopefully Philippe survives this, but what's what's gonna what's gonna happen? Because it's not no one from the first year can do the second year, and you guys got a whole like another eight weeks or something to do. Yeah, that's like, <clears throat> and we get our diploma as well if we finish it. We're yeah. like one term away from like getting the diploma. Although that's not that important, but like it is like a nice, like it's on paper that we've finished the two years. 
Do you have to do every course to get the diploma? No. I think you have to finish the whole second year. Okay. And, well, to get into the second year, you have to do, like, a certain amount of weeks. Mm. And and you have to have done Le Jure as well. Mm. Apart from that, yeah. But you don't have to do every call. You could miss, like, one or two, I think. To be honest, the acting thing, when you're doing the melodrama, I, I mean, I miss Shakespeare and Chekhov, and I don't think I'm going to be doing that, to be honest. I, I mean, I don't mind doing this third term, but screw Shakespeare, in, no, not Shakespeare and Chekhov, um, Greek tragedy. Like, okay. uh, I'm a comedian, not necessarily an actor, if you get me. <laughs> That's the worst course for me. Yeah, same here. It's... I mean, the only thing I liked about melodrama was doing that stupid um, lawyer thing with the kissing thing, where you go, oh, would you like a kiss? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I would like to denounce this person for being a prat. Hello, I'm going to defend myself. I am not a prat. <laughs> yeah, it was did, did, did it work when you did it? Did not it really, work? no. It, it it mean, it's, it's funny with the school as well. It, it's... I, I mean, it's been interesting the second term of the people I've been working with. The, the, I think two of them were, were ones where I couldn't really... Um, two of them, fair enough, had done badly, but it just wasn't good enough. But with two of the others, it's a bit like, for fuck's sake, it was really stupid, but what happened? I, I said to... I remember I was just before the end of Buffon, there was a, there was a woman that I was working with, and then she's... For the Buffon thing, she said that she wanted to uh, booth, she just wanted to go by the curtain and do the wanking sign or whatever. And I said to her that that wouldn't work. And, <laughs> and then, then when I told her that, she got completely ballistic. She would, uh, 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 Marvin, you're this, you're this, you're that, you're that. And like started causing a big scene in front of everyone. I said, Oh, I'm not going to work with you. And then she goes downstairs and then she starts saying, oh, I can't work with this man, this man. And then she starts saying this and that to that person. And then, yeah, it was just mad. And then with another one, I pointed out the holes in what they were doing that were wrong. And then they said that I was being rude or mad. But it was, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, they, they were the two that sort of, when they went badly, it was a bit like, I knew they were going to go badly anyway. So it, it's, it's, it was just stupid. But with the others, you know, if, if you lose, you lose. That's it. But, have yeah. you felt like that? <laughs> I think you have. Well, working with, yeah. I mean, like, I try and just work on my own. So I don't, like, so that never, that, like, usually, like, there's always, like, ten, like some sort of friction and tension when you work with other people. Mm. And that's why I avoid it. Because I can't deal with it. Well, well, come on, there must be some stories that have happened. <laughs> um, in terms of like, no, I never really got into an argument at all with it. Yeah. But I tried to like, well, I always tried to diffuse it. During Clown, I worked with a guy called Drew and he... Um, like for the whole, like all during the rehearsal, we were like com on complete different wavelengths. Like he was doing one thing and I was doing something else. And then when we actually did it, like Philippe said, like Philippe showed us how to actually do it. Like we agreed on something. And then Philippe like sort of showed us that like the disagreement was the thing that was funny. Uh -huh. And that, like that's what we should have showed as part of our performance mm. was like like we have two different things we're imagining, and then we're trying to like adapt to each other's thing. Mm. And it was really funny as well, like what we did. And this I was did, oh yeah, I did like uh, like the the exercise was it was something about Gibraltar. And that kid that washed up for sure, the immigrant 
that um, died and then like washed up and there's a photograph of him. I think that's what Philippe was saying, but it was like vague. So he, he was hinting at that, I think. So like we we did something and I and I I think I just went like Gibraltar and Drew just stand there doing nothing. It's like what? Like, <laughs> Gibraltar. <laughs> he's just he's like oh, I, I, I don't think I've ever met Drew what does he look like what's he like oh he only did clown yeah he, that was first year oh okay and he then did course. okay and then there's there's who else is there that was um, I never met Luca well I never spoke to him I know he did clown oh, yeah. this year didn't he I didn't met, speak to him no, uh, yeah, his second year last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was really good. Mm. He was good at all all of them, I think. All at Clown, Buffon and Vaudeville. Mm, okay. What's, what's, what did you find? <laughs> so what have you found from the girly experience as a whole? What was, how has it changed you? And what's, what's, how have you found the people and like... Yeah, just what's your, what's your summary of everything for people that haven't been to Etomps and haven't been haven't been a Goli clan? Um, I well, I'd say uh, go if you can. Yeah, if you can go, and well, yeah, like the on the website it says you'll feel more free, and that. Uh, yeah, that's like a hundred percent. I feel more free. I I really I think I gave it everything. Like when I did the courses, uh, the first term I started off pretty slow because I hadn't done any performing at all. So I was terrified when I went up. So that was just a win, getting up. And then after that, it was I was slowly. The second term, I sort of, sort of had a the breakthrough, which was like to um, not push too hard and just Philippe kept saying to be more sort of more genuine he said I can't do play big characters because okay. I, I guess because I was too nervous so yeah then that I sort of broke through in that and then my confidence did start building and I started characters started getting bigger okay and then second year during clown that's about sort of improvising being able to improvise and be bad at things like have fun being bad at stuff mm. and yeah from that i got like just being able to improvise um sort of have a character which all a character is is a a costume of and a voice and then like your own personality sort of layered behind it okay. but the, your per it like has to be genuine still like your personality so i got that from kind of like to be genuine and not not act okay and then vaudeville was like vaudeville that was about doing the improvising, but with a script. So like learning the script and then trying to make that natural and sort of your own thing. Mm. And I think Bufa must be about writing your own things. Like, so I think they're like all the courses are layering on each other. Okay. So the cloud, the improvising. And then the and then vaudeville was like script, script, and then improvising with the script. And I think Buffon would be writing your own script, mm. uh, making that script your own, and then improvising around it. Yeah, it's Buffon looks like a lot of fun though. I wish I'd completed it all. Is it? It's it's. Yeah, it's like the opposite of clown in a way, isn't it? Like with with such a Baron Cohen, he's actually making fun of the person he's talking to. Well, do you think that he's actually being an idiot? But he's not. Yeah. 
I don't. I think like from from Gollier, it's more like the focus is on fu- having fun. Mm. If you're like if you're having fun and nothing else matters, doesn't matter if it's like good quality or whatever. As long as you're having fun, I think Sasha Baron Cohen like. I, I'm not sure so much now, but like his his earlier stuff, he was like, that was just purely fun. It didn't look like there was any like intention behind it. But that like the like the sort of people like people taking things too seriously, they're making themselves look like idiots because like he was just having fun and doing his thing, yeah. and they trying to take it seriously so they're making themselves look stupid but i don't think he had a it didn't look like he had like a plan in place to do that it was more like this is a funny idea and i want to do it i want to try this stupid thing yeah okay yeah it's 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 well i don't think he's it's, it's funny in a way I don't think he really needs to do it that much anymore. So he's not as passionate as he was about it. He doesn't really need to yeah. work with him, does he? He's, he's... That's, that's what I sense from his new, a lot of his new stuff is like there's some sort of agenda behind it. He has mm. some sort of like political statement to make. I mean, his best work is Borat, then it's Ali G, and then it's probably The Dictator. But The Dictator wasn't too bad. But I mean, I, don't know. I, w- I wouldn't rate it like I'd say Ali G, Bora, and then Bruno. I don't know if Bruno, I just thought it was gay porn or something. It, it, was, <laughs> it was a bit too much for me, seeing <laughs> <laughs> all that. Yeah. But I mean, the thing that I've. There was one character from Who is America who I'd like to see in a film. And it was that um, American guy in the ponytail. And then when he went to that air, um, air in America where it's filled with just rednecks and said, we're going to build this big mosque. And they start saying, oh, we ain't going to have no this or that here. Do you remember that episode? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was terrific. I mean, <laughs> I'd love that. But it, it's, I think he could do a film with that character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's... Maybe it's as maybe the characters are as good as his earlier ones, but I don't know because I because I sort of grew up with them. For me, it's like yeah, maybe it's like oh now because I've seen it before, hmm. and it's just like a re it's like re done what he did. Hmm. Well, I kind of sense there is like an agenda behind what he's doing, like political statement. Maybe. Whereas like Borat and Ali G were just like, were f- like funny characters that he came up with. And it just happened that there was, they also created like a political statement. But that was like a side effect from hmm. like the actual characters that he made. It's, I'm, 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 yeah well i want to watch his podcast there's there's a podcast uh, do you know stuart goldsmith no well he runs a, a big podcast where he interviews comedians and there's one where he interviews ali g such a really? clown. so i'd like to find out why he got into clowning and what was i haven't looked at it yet because i've still got a backlog of ones that i'm going through and it is interesting in a way because there's as a comedian, there's about four, like, there's Elf Lions that went to his school, Zach Zucker, um, Vince Vigo, is that right? Yeah. And then uh, there's... Uh, yeah. Is it Vince Vigo? Vigo the Viking. That's what yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And then there's, uh, what's his face? Yeah, there's Helen Botham Carter. Uh, you can see some of the elements of Clown of Helen Botham Carter because she plays all these over-the-top characters. Yeah, it's really watchable though. Like the, yeah, what he teaches is like that. There's like, there's like a, most, a lot of people, I think when they act, they do like sort of just, they try and make it look real. 
Mm. But like Philippe's teachers more make it look like have fun and make it make it interesting to watch. Mm. Now that's that's the main thing though, isn't it? Because look at Arnold Schwarzenegger; he's a terrible actor, but he's yeah. worth watching. Yeah, really watchable. Yeah. Jason Statham, he's not necessarily. I mean, he plays the same characters, but he's watchable. Um, I tell you what, I, I really I, now that I've been watching Girl A, I've, I'm not really an actor yet per se. I mean, but I, I, I pay more more attention to things. But when I watched the Harry Potter series about a few weeks ago, God, they are terrible actors, and they are fucking boring. They are fucking useless. Like they are terrible. They are absolute dog shit. The only reason those films are worth watching is because of the supporting cast. Because without them, those three are absolutely useless. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they are. Daniel Radcliffe is, is one of the worst actors I've ever seen. He's I think just... it's funny that like in the books, Harry's supposed to be tall. And like in reality, Daniel Radcliffe never grew up. <laughs> He never no. got taller. He stayed the same height. He's short. Yeah, he's, he's the same height as he was when he was 12. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, I've watched some interviews of him and they are so wooden. He's so boring. Like He, he answers it in the way you're... Like it's just... There's no... It's like when you're having fish and chips, right? You need the tartar sauce and maybe a bit of salt. He is like the fish and chips without any batter. Or chips. He's just a fish. He is boring as fuck. If I, if I, I tell you what, I'd much rather shit myself for a whole week than watch an interview for an hour of Daniel Radcliffe. I'd have more fun doing that and more pleasure than, and it'll be more painful watching him than having a terrible shit for a week. <laughs> I think, um, yeah. Be careful what you say. When you're older, you might actually be sitting on a chair with shit in your pants and then think, actually, I'd rather watch that Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, t- I tell you what, though. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I-, I, have, I have blocked a few toilets in my time, if I'm being honest. Yeah. There's I've got a talent a- for that. I've had a few places where, like, the, the, it's been blocked. I've had to flush it a few times, to, and I couldn't get down. And I remember, what's it called, at one of my workplaces, I absolutely blocked it, and they had to order a plumber to fix it. And then I was sacked the next day. <laughs> you were sacked? Yes. <laughs> For that? Or because you were I don't know. There was a few other things as well. It, other than the fact that I never wanted to be a web developer, but <laughs> I just did it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the block toilet that that pushed them over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest, it was in a bit of a secluded area, and they had to walk. Or it was in Kingston, so it was in a little business site, and they had to, you know, they had to go and ask another building if they could have it, go in and use the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> You started using other people's toilets. I, I don't know they did, but like for one day, and then it was sorted out. But yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I, I, my degree was I was a web developer, and I, well, I did compete with business, but it was a degree that my parents put me into because they, you know, there'll be lots of jobs in it, and I'll be secure. But I never had any passion doing it. So, like, I think one of the easy things to tell if someone's not really going to be good or passionate about topic is the way they treat it so like i don't know with whenever i was doing the web development and of course i didn't really i had the sort of, mindset, the sort of mindset doing, doing as little as possible, as possible. Like it's like that's, that's what the that's mindset what the mindset people, people see like they ask like they ask could you help me could, could you help you with that or they they don't make extra they don't make truly understand the topic they try and um I'll be honest, I think I did try and find a few shortcuts here and there, and I just didn't see a future there. And you can see that a lot of people in the course that I was doing had that same sort of mindset. You can tell, you know, when, when, when someone's passionate about what they're doing, they really want to make something of it, there's an attitude and there's a difference to it. 
and I also feel like that with with being in comedy and with acting as well. Even, even you know, I don't really give a shit. Even in some cases in the school, I feel like some people are just doing it just because they want to be famous, not because they enjoy it. And that's that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's I, I I I love being a comedian and performer, and I'm going to be doing it for the rest of my life. And that's that's the be all and end all. But yeah. I, I, that's what I feel with a lot of performers. They they try and cheat, try and get shortcuts. They don't want to, they don't see a vision. They just want to be famous, and that's it. But they don't care how. But in some cases, I'm pretty sure even with some people in our school, and with with comedians or like that, if you put them on Love Island or if you put them as on Jeremy Kyle, they wouldn't care if that made them famous or not. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. But yeah, I think for me, uh, I all during the course, I was uh, I was asking myself that question, uh, like, um, like, am I just doing this to be famous? And the answer is yes, I was. No, I, wasn't. <laughs> I was no, no, I. Uh, I think I just, yeah, I wanted to like create things and like this was like a fun way of doing it. Yeah. Like one of the most fun ways to do it for me. So it was like, and I didn't want to be an actor either when I did mm. it. I wanted to do comedy, mm. like, right, like stand up or something. But actually learning the acting part is like, like it is comedy, like what I've learned. It's more comedy than what I thought comedy was. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was about the jokes, but it's not like, I don't think that comedy is about the jokes at all anymore. It's about the, the yeah. character. Yeah. 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 Jokes. Uh, if, I think if you want to be really good, then it's not just about the jokes. But if you, uh, in, on, the, on the lot, see, I've been doing comedy for about maybe six years now. And if, if a lot of them, it is mostly about the jokes. They they like the either stream of consciousness or like they're one liners. This that's what it is in the UK. And it's, if you put them in a situation where it doesn't require, where they have to perform and they have to think out of their box and like they got their jokes, most of them can't do well at all. They they really struggle. Like with um, when I did my end of year New Year's show and like big show in the Grove, which is a night I run a Hammersmith. They, they got a big bar downstairs and you couldn't just tell jokes because the way it's set up, like there's pillars there that and people can't see you. So you've got to improvise and do different things. But a lot of them, when they're in a situation like that, they were fucked like Donkey Kong. They could not handle themselves. They, they had no ability to adjust or to do anything. And that's, I think if you want to, but the really good comics, they can cope with it. Like there's a lot more to them than just jokes and that they've got presence, they've got attitude, they've got performance, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's what's so, what, are you more of a comedian or an actor? What are you as a whole? Comedian, I think. I think, yeah. I think it's, yeah. Cause like in terms of acting, I can't actually act. I'm still terrible, but like I can, I can do sort of funny acting, which yeah. is like, so like, I think what I can do is like act in like a cartoonish way where it's not real, but it's like, it's not me, but it's not, it's not a realistic character. It's like a stupid character. Yeah, I think that's what I can do. I've seen your videos. You do you've been doing a lot of funny characters. <laughs> what did what did you make of my threat to you online? <laughs> I was a bit worried. <laughs> I don't know what I let myself in for? <laughs> Is that why you messaged me? What are you going to do now? <laughs> no, because yeah, I I like, I've, I haven't really got any stand up. I haven't done any stand up at all. So like you like your so you've done a fair bit of stand-up. So when you were saying it, we're going to do like a, a well, like a roasting battle. Oh yeah, I, it's, it, I, I, was like, I was worried. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> no, effectively, well, I'll have a chat with you later on. But I want to. I've booked myself in for a lot of a few things this week, but 
what I want to do is a series of podcasts and a few like sketches of people online like this. And we'll do a quick sort of script, very simple, and then we'll just improvise with each other. And then I'll upload it on YouTube or, or, or um, TikTok. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's what it is. It's, yeah, it's... Yeah, so I think it's good that you say that you, you've made the decision to be a comedian, because I think if you're not clear what you want, then it's hard to, to put the work into it, to go and get it. Because if you say you want to be, oh, I want to be this, I want to be that, you're, you're too split in one area, and then you, you don't know where to put your energy in, so you're not focused, you're lazy, and then you can just piss about and not do anything. Yeah. I think it's good to find, uh, like, successful people who who like you can just sort of follow the path that they took do the same sort of things don't copy them but do your own thing but like yeah. like copy like the sort of the like the method or like the like the the medium that they the mediums that they that they went into hmm. So I quite, I like um, people, I like Sasha Baron Cohen, I like, yeah. like Robin Williams, Jim Carrey. Uh -huh. I'm, sort of, I'm sort of honing in on like, sort of what they did and sort of following. So they, they started, they all started with stand up, doing stand up. And then yeah. they went into sort of characters in, in movies and then they sort of com started combining the two. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, what's it called? If, if, if I get offered certain things that aren't necessarily being a comedian, I'll take it. But what's it called? My, my main focus is to be a good comedian or the best comedian I can possibly be. Yeah. And that's trying different things, doing this and that. And I think, yeah. And also, how come you haven't given me any drugs? <laughs> I'm joking. Because you said you want to be like Robin Williams. He's, he's, I mean, he was... He was Snifferlox, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah, he was well on like him and John Bellucci. They they <laughs> they they used to sniff like they used to play a game where they had a table and they sniff cocaine and up their nose until the end of the table. Oh, that's how they had so much energy all the time. Yeah, it's it's that's it's some of them, yeah. And I feel um John Bellucci, Chris Farley, and there was some comedians that I see on like if they're too expressive where it's not normal they're on they're on cocaine no like hips or butts most if, if it's, it seems a bit <laughs> odd they're sort of they're they're, they're on something because it's not natural yeah. um, but I mean Jim Carrey I don't think I'm not sure he might have taken some stuff who knows but it's but he is I do like their performance as a whole I think one thing, it's good to follow their path. Like I'm a big fan of Eddie Izzard. He's a hero of mine because um, of the struggle he went through to get to where he wanted to go. But yeah, I think it's good to have heroes that you look up to. But I think we, we all got to make our own way and just go from there. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's an interesting thing at the moment. Uh, Sometimes. I think, like, the drugs thing though is like a, with comedy I think with any sort of performing it's it's like a big it's a big thing because you get such a rush from like when you do well mm. and you and you don't want to lose it mm. so it's really easy to I, I well I meditate a lot so like I don't think I'd be able to do this if I didn't meditate even being small time it's even like the people like messaging i like, only get like maybe one or one or two a day from doing these videos it's still like a massive rush what's the so what's the you, you it's interesting you do meditation what's so you, you do meditation in the morning or in the evening or how do you use yeah I do hour in the morning okay and yeah, I was doing two hours last year, but that was a big commitment. Have you heard of Andy Kaufman? Oh yes, I have. What was, I, I know he was a he was a bit of an eccentric, wasn't he? Yeah, 
So I'm a big fan of his and he, but I think my personality's kind of similar to his and he, like he started meditating. That's when he started performing because he was meditating so he could handle his fear. And then he just, like the more famous he got, the more he was meditating. And uh, after I read that in his autobiography, I started doing it regularly. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it really helps. I, I've I've not really done any meditating, and I was asking you about it in the school, but I, I don't know. I've been doing something that's a bit different, and it sort of helped a bit anyway. There's these like little YouTube videos on like meditation or something, and you just plug that into your ear, and I found that that's relaxed me. Uh, even at the start of the day or do, like when I go to sleep or something and I wake up really relaxed. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I had this thought today that like, it's not really about, that like, the meditation isn't about, about the practice of like focusing on your breathing. I think that's part of it to like hone your focus, to like strengthen your, concentration so it lasts longer and it's more intent but i think like just having <clears throat> having time where you don't do anything and have just space for yourself to to just feel how you're feeling yeah i think that's that's good i think because i think really um, i sometimes get like that some i felt like i got that in school as well when i was there before i left and I felt like sometimes I have that when I've been in London, because you just you're in the same place doing the same things. But when I go away or something, then I like process things and I figure out what happened with this and that, and I think more clearly. And then I get new ideas and I go off from there. And that's that's I'm only sort of, sort of figuring out some of the things that happened in the school now, rather or like with oh, yeah, yeah. gigs. Like now that I'm away from it. And it's, yeah. One, one thing one thing i find quite funny since i've been doing the lockdown a lot of people are like they're not doing much at all and i like message them but i thought that like, i'm busy so i'll message them just to get it out there so i don't forget to do it and then i go back to work because i don't get distracted and then i message them once i've finished some of my work and then they then they then they ignore me <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's it's a bit no i just find that interesting way because it's a bit you you're not are you not I'm not doing no sort of silliness. I'm just trying to get work done, and it's a bit. Is it? I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. I just think that's a bit. You, I mean, you've got better things to do to worry about things like that. I don't know. What are your thoughts <laughs> on people during the lockdown? So I sort of zoned out because I was thinking of something else. <laughs> what are you thinking of? I'll repeat it, shall I? What we yeah, yeah, say it again? <laughs> you want me to repeat it? <laughs> yeah. One thing I've been doing recently, I've been trying to contact a few people, um, like that I know, and I've like messaged them, and then I'll, I thought I don't want to get distracted from things too much. I'll switch Facebook off, then I'll get back to work, and I'll talk to them later. And then when I go and talk to them later, they ignore me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you're saying like it, when you uh, like you contact people and then you you turn off your your like your the way. So I don't understand. <laughs> no, I just switch off from social media for a while. Yeah. And I'll get back to it. And then you go back and they haven't messaged you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they message. They, they message me. But then when I message them back, they don't message back. Oh, right. And then you turn it off again. Yeah, yeah, it's just the way it is. It's funny. I've had a lot of that since. I, I, it's, it's one of the things I find funny. People are interesting. Like we, not, we don't, we, we, I think we live in an age that's a bit too sensitive with a lot of things at the moment. And I think that we're, we we get too bothered by things that aren't that big a deal in terms of things as a whole. Like when people say certain jokes and this or that, it's it's we're too sensitive to it. It's about the intention behind a lot of jokes that matters. Yeah. 
one. Yeah, that's what I think. It's not about the like the joke is irrelevant irrelevant that it's more like the intention of the joke yeah if, if the intention is like an attack on someone or something then it's not then like it's not a really a joke it's more like something serious yeah but if it's like a if it's something just to make people laugh like people don't understand is it like what is someone saying something to make people laugh? Or are they saying it because they're a, 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 an arsehole? Yeah. That's that's the distinction. And once that's made, then you can get offence. But if they're doing it just to make people laugh, then that's not... You, you can't... It's it's a bit... You can't say not get offended, but like try and have bear that in mind and do that, try not to get too annoyed by it. But I've seen it so many times that people decide to get offended straight away and get really wound up out of little things that don't really it just meant there's a bit of a joke and a laugh and it's, 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 and you do little things with people nowadays and people get very sensitive about it and they like it's it's they overreact to things like I told you with when I had when I was working a few projects at the school like all I did was just agree with her point and I was like telling her the truth about it and she completely lost it. It's like I'd, like I'd said something racist or attacked a member of her family and she completely, boom. It was a bit like, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, I think it's important to like, I think the sort of vanguard of creativity now is to like say fuck you to that sort of, the, the like offended people. I think the vanguard is to do what, what you want and not not care what people think so much. Yeah, and I think one thing that I find quite funny as well is that during the election, especially in the UK, and they do that with Brexit and they do that with the US election as well, the, others, the other side of the argument, they always try and paint the other side as a racist or bigoted or yeah. stupid. They try and demonise that person before they've even had a, before they've even known them or had a chat with them. And it's a bit, and, it, and each time they've lost, but they keep doing it. It's been 2016 since Brexit and Trump happened. But during the, 2020, the 2019 election, we were at the same tactics as they did before. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, it, I don't know if this is. And so many people, like they try and, there's a very group think that with a lot of people are, that I'm coming across. And they're all saying, you've got to vote Labour or you've got to do this and that. And it's a bit like, you're trying to force, you're trying to bully people, you're trying to brainwash people to think a certain way. And if I don't think that way, you're subhuman and you're stupid and I don't like you and we can't talk to you. It was even yeah. stupid enough that they actually closed a comedy gig down. One of the promoters said, if you vote a conservative, you can't perform at my night. <laughs> and he said that if you are conservative, you're this, you're racist, you're this and that. But hold on, isn't that a bit of racism for you to say that someone who voted conservative can't perform or go to your night? It's, it's, yeah, that's like, generalization of of, uh, of a person because of one of that like one action they've done. It's and um, it's a bit like I don't I don't know if this is like if this is if this is a new thing or like like society's always been like this. Uh, I know. I think I, no, I'm not. You know what? I'm not sure, but I do get the well, feeling. It's in more, more, and it's become more in our awareness, like the, like the offended people, because like we're so outraged by that. That like on social media, there's like algorithms to, like, feed you things that are, that sort of trigger you. So I don't know if this like triggers us. So like we're getting recommended videos like that because we're watching things like that. Yeah. Or, or yeah. yeah. That's, I think that's, that's probably part of it. But there's other things as well that, like, society probably is more like that, it's more polarised now. It's, yeah, I mean, it's a bit... Um, yeah, it, it's, it's bloody... Um, no, I think I, 
yeah, society is more polarized. But I think, I think there's there's a like every generation seems to have their thing in that right. Like in the seventies or eighties, it was hippies and all that, and then the generation before they had maybe teddy boys or something. And I feel that this generation is the millennials' thing is to be very offend. Yeah, they choose to be offended over things. Yeah. And and what's it called? I was speaking to one person. He says that the same people are getting angry now about things that they should be offended about uh, are the same people who would be very racist in a certain time. You know, when they used to have a sign that said "No, that's no Irish, no dogs." There would be the same people who would get annoyed at those things, like maybe twenty years ago. But now they choose to get to be annoyed at other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they're the new. They're like the. The people who are offended, they're like the left, the lefties, they're the new conservatives, they're the new, like, like this is what I think, they're the new, like, this is now the, like, status quo is political correctness, and they've taken that, and they've, like, gone further with it, and they're pushing for more of it, like, we want more, uh, we, we want people to, to, to be considerate about everything they say, and like, I think that's like they're the I think they're the new um, like conservatives and the people sort of and the actual like more right wing people now are, are the people who are like pushing for more freedom and to more yeah they're the more creative people now I think. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's I don't know it's, it's trying to change the status quo I think yeah but I think it's sort of forced uh, I mean the, the message is good that everyone should be treated equally but I think the don't push it too far because otherwise we can't have a laugh or it, it's it's going to be make things boring and too safe and when things are too too safe and too restricted then it, yeah it's stifles creativity and it it just makes things too boring. Like Philippe says, that's fucking boring because you're not you're not being yeah a little bit, but not too far when you say certain things. But that's it. You don't need to try and sort of rub it in people's faces because you're trying to control people. Yeah. And then you're having it the other way now, where people are going the, the other way with the EDL and all that. And I think it's just basically a lot of people on both sides are just people that are looking for excuse to be angry. Yeah. And they want someone I, to get I, I, Yeah, I know. I think I know, like, partly where the anger is coming from. Uh, I think for, like, racism as an example, I think, like, everyone has a degree of racism built into their own mind. Like, you, like, I think it's, like, hardwired. And, like, the culture makes you reject it. And, and like push it away but it's always a part of you and because you're pushing everyone's pushing it away so it's like fighting back and it's fighting back in well in the right wing sort of proud racists who are being proud that they're that they who are like taking their racism seriously and like and like saying racist things and then there's like the left wing who like hate racists because they're like that and they hate that part of themselves. Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's we know, but we all have, we have prejudices. I agree on that point in that we do have assumptions and different groups of people and races. They, they go into our head, but um, whoever you are, is going to be a little bit here and there and it'll affect the way we behave yeah you can't yeah you can't function without prejudice without some prejudice in your mind like you have to fate like you have to favor some things instead of other things or like or you can't live mm. i'm not i'm not talking about people i'm talking about like everything mm. Like you can't make you can't make a decision if you don't have prejudices. Yeah. If you don't favour things and um like disfavour other things. 
Yeah, it's it's just one of those things, but yeah. I know right now, right, then that if, if in comedy or if I went to our school and I started shouting out I'm a loud conservative and like I was like I said said certain things, I'll do like nine eight, ninety nine percent of the people in the school would be against me and ninety nine percent of the comedians would be against me. Yeah, like that. They'll be very because nearly every single one of them's all on that side. Yeah, but I don't know. I hate. I sort of hate. I hate people who are like proud right wingers and proud left wingers. I hate anyone that like, like, has formed their own identity out of being left or right wing. Because it's kind of meaningless as well. It doesn't mean anything. It just means you're a. It just means that you're taking things way too seriously that you have no control over, and you're trying to force other people to like to like f- follow your stupid ideas. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like. I, it's like when you see those some Christians or Muslims in the street and they start trying to pretend to be your friend and they give you leaflets and pamphlets and saying you should worship our God. It's a bit like, will you fuck off? Yeah, yeah. I think there's another theory that like the like this this like offended thing is like a new sort of religion where like everyone like everyone's Everyone's become sort of atheistic and nihilistic now and they've lost religion and like everyone needs a religion. Like you have to have some sort of belief to function because if you don't believe anything, like nothing has any meaning, Mm. like you have no, you know, have nowhere to aim because everywhere is meaningless. And so uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> what was I saying? I can't remember. You're saying that what's it called that you should believe this and everything's meaningless. I remember. You yeah, were... like yeah, we're sort of brought up without religion now, and like that has that's left a gap. It's left a gap for people to fill, and people are filling it with politics now. Hmm. Like the belief is politics, uh, like left or right is gonna is a thing to aim for now, for the future. It's like this is this is the the promised land. <laughs> Do you, like the the mecca, you say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's to be honest. The person that I really don't like is Jeremy Corbyn. I really. No, he he was complete. Why did he try and paint himself as Jesus? You're not fucking Jesus. You know, if if you if you had a really attractive woman like throw yourself at you, you do, it, and she had all the ticked all the boxes, there would be a thought in your mind that you would want to sleep with her, even though you're married. It's just, it's just the way it is. Like you're, you're trying to pretend to be your your saint. No, you're not a saint. You're just like everyone else. And it was a bit too much. And well, Boris Johnson, he's just a very crafty man. Like he, he acts daft, he looks stupid, yeah. he puts the wool over your eyes. And then before I know it, you know, he's slept with your missus. That's 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 Boris Johnson. He's a he's a slippery snake. He acts yeah. stupid, but then he gets you from behind. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, Phil well, Philippe at the school he said anyone any pe- anyone who knows anything is an idiot. If you know something, you're an idiot. What does it mean? Like because like, no one really knows anything. Like especially politicians, like they're they'll, they're like certain that they're certain that their policies are right and good for everyone, but they're stupid because because they don't know and it's just one it's kind of just one perspective on it so like boris johnson and corbyn they got sort of opposite views but they're both sort of certain that they're right but they can't be right it appears that way 
it appears that way yeah but yeah like, like that's like you have if you're a politician you have to pretend like at least well you should pretend like you know that you're certain of it but like i think politicians are like sit like they're seriously certain of what they believe like they're certain they're actually certain of it hmm. i don't know but that's part of what a politician is though a snake <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and oh, I was going to say, like the yeah, like no one knows anything, as in like, like the way the universe works is so complex, you can't even comprehend a tiny part of it. Mm. And like, really intelligent people, they're just really good at guessing. They're not. They don't know anything. They're just. They see, I think they see patterns and they can make a good guess from the pattern. Mm. But really, the, the guess might be completely wrong. Because the, like, what they know is sort of that much and the universe is like, like the whole bigger than this room. You mean that people that are too, too, I think what Philippe's getting at is he means that people that are too confident in their own thoughts. But they, they're very certain they know what they're doing and they're not open to change or growing or being questioned and seeing. Yeah, if, yeah, if you know everything, you can't learn anything because you already know it. You already think you know it. Yeah, so you don't listen. Yeah. What do you think of uh, Donald Trump? I think he's, he's a more clever person than people who are on the other side try and make him out to be. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he's not stupid. And like with all the tweets he's saying with this and that, he's actually using you because you don't like him. He's saying certain things so that you give him publicity. It's like Floyd Mayweather. He used the fact that he built a career out of being the villain and getting people to hate him, and made a lot of money from it. Yeah. And. Yeah, Hillary, I, 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 I'll tell you what, I do prefer Trump more than Hillary Clinton, though. I feel that like he's more real than she is. I really didn't like her. Like, her, that stupid smile she put on and that, that the way she behaved was just... You know they're responsible for the death of about 100 people, her and Bill Clinton. And there's all sorts of dodgy things going on with their charity. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Yeah, I... I uh... Yeah, everyone could like see that Hillary Clinton was completely fake, and that everyone had had enough of had enough of fake politicians. Well, it's a bit. She got most of the votes, but it's a bit like she wasn't standing for anything. Like she got most of the votes, but like everything she was saying, yeah, it was. Well, Trump basically did things logically. He 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 got the votes in where it mattered. And if, if, if the system is like that, why didn't Hillary Clinton do the same thing? Well, in trying to please everyone, please the main people that are important. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I think the... Like, Trump is... Uh, well, actually, I quite, I quite like him because he's, like, funny to watch. Don't say that too much outside of here, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I I, think I like him because he's, he's and like I can see that like, yeah, he has some sort of vision for the country, and like what he's saying and stuff, he's just sort of having like he is having fun whatever he's doing, like when he's having these like interviews and stuff, he's sort of he's half taking the piss out of out of the people interviewing him. Yeah, it's, it's a funny thing in a way, because he's, yeah, it's, because if you went round now and put on a, <laughs> one of my comedian friends, do you know what he's done? He's put on a hat saying, make Lewisham great again. <laughs> Not, <Yeah. laughs> he's a bloody funny comedian, but um, well, I can't, with 
yeah, if, if I wanted to get in an argument with a lot of people I know that are my age, just wear a Trump hat and saying that Trump's the greatest and they'll soon be down at my neck. It's, they will take the bait so easy. He's, it's, yeah. He's, um, yeah. He is a, yeah, he's a troll. I it's, think, yeah. well, I think he's, a, he's like publicly a troll, but like, I think he's actually, like he has some sort of vision, but I don't, I like, I don't think he's, no, he's not a good president, I don't think, but he's, because he's like so rich and like his whole, like he's never, he's never not had millions of dollars. No, he's not really a self-made. Um, he doesn't know what it's like for regular people. What well, a funny thing about him is he makes the lie that his dad lent him sixty thousand dollars or something daft like that. But the truth was, he, his dad sent him like a million, like twenty million dollars. <laughs> so it's, and he's lost a lot of money. But it's it's just, to be honest, yeah, I would like to see more people from like Sid Khan's no Sadiq Khan's background get into politics it would be good to see more people from the slums run the country because they'll be more in touch like someone like David Cameron or Boris Johnson cannot say you know I I know what it's like or I they can never say that word because they've always had everything yeah I don't I think this I think yeah I think the the um it's so complicated running a country that there's no, like, like it's very, yeah, I think it's like impossible actually to do a good job. All you can do is not, not do a, not make things worse. Mm. I don't know. I've never run a country before, but you know, maybe we could be, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I run America. You run, you run uh, UK, and that's it. <laughs> well, what? Why do they say that the Americans and the UK have a special relationship? It just sounds like a like a billionaire with a wife, but then his then his mistress on the side. That special <laughs> relationship. Why does? Why do they refer to it like that? <laughs> special. Uh, I don't know. I think they're buzzwords, aren't they? To try and oh it sounds a bit like oh your special needs we have a special relationship can you go to the toilet properly okay let me tell you how to go to the toilet what you do is you you get a tissue you wipe yourself and then you throw it in the the toilet and then you wash or it's like um i thought it sounds more sinister like a like a special relationship yeah, as in like, a, some, like underhand like dealings going on it's a bit like tony soprano saying hey come on eh you know we got a special relationship you gotta give me like 50 kind of g's for for every kind of week okay and then then we won't fucking knock your teeth out okay <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people have been saying that um, the Conservatives are selling the NHS and they're doing all this and that. I mean, the NHS is underfunded. We can see that. But I, I hear that this was, I will, I don't, I hear that this was an initiative sort of started by Labour, in a way, in terms of them selling. But I, I, as you said, I don't, one thing I do want to do is I want to, at some point during my life, really make an effort to understand politics as a whole and then make my own informed decision on what way I go. But yeah. I don't like the fact that, especially on the left side with the Labour lot, they try and force you to think a certain way. So what I, what I do is I just say yes, 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 just to, just to keep them. And then, then I tell them to fuck off when they're not looking. <laughs> it's My goal is to um, try and put politics so far out of my awareness that I completely forget it exists. 
Because it doesn't make me happy. It just brings misery. Yeah, it does. It does. Too much misery. <laughs> and I don't know if I'd vote. Do you vote? Uh, I, I did vote, but I'm not going to say which way. Because <laughs> I, I, I want to keep yeah. that sort of... I don't want to ever... So you're hiding that pretty well. <laughs> I don't want to ever vote. No, I don't. That's sarcasm, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to reveal who I support because it's a bit like, you know, I don't want, I know that these sort of things cause issues. It's a bit like when you come out as a Liverpool supporter or something that causes issues. And so I keep that quiet as well. So it's a I bit. I don't know. I think you shouldn't keep it quiet because I think the, the, uh, I think like the, like your potential career is on the internet now and the internet is so big it specializes in niches so the more you you are like the more people like you you're attract which is what you want like you don't want you don't want people that that aren't going to like some of your stuff following you yeah, you know, that's true. You know, you know, I've had a bit of a thought about that. And I've, I've had a thought about that in the school as well. Like I've been a bit... Uh, I need to be more picky about who I choose to associate and mix with. And because they say that if you mix with dogs, you get fleas. And so it's a bit... <laughs> no, but that's the truth. And sometimes I get into relationships and friendships with people where I feel like I don't gain anything from the relationship, but the other person does. And it's a bit like I'm no one's fucking dad. Fuck yeah. off. I'm not I'm like I, I was with a conversation the other day. I've been busy and I try to chat with them, I've been nice to them. And one of them was fucking very nosy into trying to find out what I've been doing. And I said, No, it's a bit like I'm not why should I what's it called share what I know of you when you're not really giving me much in return? And you like I'm not here to give. Pay me yeah. money first and then I'll <laughs> it's I don't mind you, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, talking to you. That's what money is, though. Like, yeah. That's what money is for, is like when you can't, when you don't, when you can't give anything, then you give your money. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a bit like it's at the school. Give, and you have to pay people if you, yeah. if you want something from them. Exactly. So everything is like an exchange of value. Like everything in life is an exchange. Even if it doesn't look like an exchange, sometimes the exchange is just like being positive. Mm. Like people like you because you're positive and they want you to be around them. Mm. But that's the exchange. There's like, because there is, there's people who are like, do you know anyone that like just gets given loads of stuff and they're, like they don't really do anything. They're just ha they're just happy people. Yeah, they're but cool. Want to do boys. Yeah, yeah, like cool people. You just, but people just want to do things for them. So that's the that's the value that they're exchanging is just the the positive attitude. But that's probably the like the thing you can control as well and can like like you can like anyone can do that. Anyone can become positive. Yeah, it's, there's all sorts of things on the internet. There's like with a lot of things that you want to do now, you can do it. There's not really much of an excuse. It's just a, if you believe in yourself, you work hard and you look at yourself and honestly, and you analyze yourself, get feedback, and you keep going, then there's going to be a way that you can start making things happen. It's, yeah. it's, but if you're not going to do those things, then you can't expect things to happen. Yeah. No, it's, it's a bit, it's a, yeah, it was a bit, in, I've, I've had a lot of those relationships in before where it's just one way and it's a bit like, now I think, you know, I need to be careful about that because it's a bit like, it's, yeah, it's, it's irritates me a bit. And it's, I remember I was talking to um, Shanice about a few things in the school. She's quite a clever girl. I respect her a lot. One of my favourite people in the school. And I like you, you and April as well. But, um, yeah, like Shanice, is that was the that's the Singaporean woman. Singapore, yeah. 
And then, and then when I was talking to her, like four, four or five people started like sitting around trying to o- overhear the conversation. It's a bit like, you got nothing else fucking better to do, mate. Like, you go out and do things. It's a bit like, I don't want to be around people that are sitting around not wanting to do anything and trying to sort of leech stuff off you without wanting to do anything themselves. Yeah. I don't like people like that. It's a bit, yeah. I, I said I don't mind being honest and saying things as they are. So when I will, I will. Yeah, like that's not, that's another like thing that you have to offer is your honesty. That's a lot of like a lot of people don't know that. Like if you're honest, people like that. It and it hurts as well to be honest. It's like a painful thing to do. Yeah, well, it's got me. In, that's that's the thing I've done before. You see, I'll be honest and try and be helpful, but then the person will try and be clever and steal shit off me. So I'm quite careful about that now. I remember there was one bloke who's been trying to... I kicked him out, what's it called, out of my club, uh, what's it called, last year. But I should have kicked him out a lot sooner. He's, he's basically this... I don't want to talk ill of people, but I don't like him. He's, 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 he's one of those... There's a lot of acts that you get maybe in America and the UK. But they start copying 40-year-old top six successful American comedians. They come things like, you know what I mean? Like, dude. And they, come, the guy. they try and be like that. But you're like 24, 25. You're not that person. And then like, he tried to, he's been trying to steal my act and doing this and that. But I kicked him out anyway, which was good. And then I tried to make amends with him, you know, gave, gave him a chance. But then he said that he knew something about advertising a show or something. So I said, yeah, okay, could you give me some advice in it? But he gives me some complete shit. Like I know it's fucking bullshit. I know I know your head's up your ass, but come on, there is some understanding. And then, then he asked me some advice on YouTube, so I'll be nice, give him a bit of help. Thought maybe he would help me out, but he didn't. So it, I felt guilty about doing that. And then I just told him to fuck off, and that was it. And it's, mm. but I, it's no, I don't know about people stealing acts because I think it's a, no. Well, but, I've, I've not I've not really done an act that people can copy like, I haven't done stand up or anything so I don't know but I think like, after being at Golia like the like, like what Philippe says is basically you're selling your fun like, if you're having fun that's like that's what you're selling when you're on stage like whatever you're doing so it's important that you're having fun usually your fun like the thing that you're doing that is fun is unique to you and like no one can really copy it because you are like that that is your fun what you're doing that is what people like and watch so people like so like if someone copies it they're like they're not having their own fun they're trying to copy yours and it's and it doesn't work like people don't like watching it it's probably better than doing like something boring and shit just copying someone else who's having fun but like it's still it's not it's not from like the original source of it which is like the which is like the gold but everyone can do it everyone's got their own fun so i don't think i don't really get i don't i don't buy into stealing acts well, that's what that's what people do, though. and that's that's you like it's was well, I, I read into it. It's a bit of a narcissistic sort of personality thing where they want to try and take traits of yours so they feel more confident. They try and what they do, yeah, yeah. But people can do that, but it doesn't work. So you can just let them do it because it won't work for them. Well, it's a bit. It's a bit like when I saw that person keep on doing it. It's just a bit sort of. It stops you from being creative because you have to bit, sort of hold your stuff in because you'll try and st- steal shit and take credit for it. So I just thought, no, I think they ought to just let it all out. Like let them steal it. Like let them steal it because it's, it's, it's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. Like, let them steal your stuff and then laugh at it because it's laugh at how how shit it is compared to like when you did it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Because it doesn't pay off. I don't think it pays off in the Not long, long term, but short the term it might. Pandemic won't pay off at all. For the short term, it could. Yeah, it, might, it might be embarrassing if, like, your if that's your act, someone's copied it and then they've gone on before you. 
and then you go on with the same act. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's, that's that's sometimes. Yeah, that's that was the situation that was done. But yeah, I've made that decision, and if yeah. you if you're the original source of it, then you just come up with something else. Yeah, no, I do that a lot, but it's a bit like I don't want to have to go through. It's a lot of it's a lot of extra effort as well, and it's. Um, I would much rather make things easier for myself by keep on doing my own creative things and keep what other things I have as well. And I don't, I've been a bit too open with people that don't deserve my openness. And I think I need to be more open with people that I feel I'm going to gain a lot, they're going to gain a lot, and it's going to be a good friendship. That's that's what I want. And yeah, if, if, it's, if I like someone, I'm more than willing to help them out if I see that they have the right attributes and they'll help me out as well. If I don't like you, I don't want to fucking help you. Fuck off. That's it. Yeah. yeah. What do you feel? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't... Someone... I mean, I'm, I'm a nice person, so I don't... I don't like telling people to... I don't like saying no. But if... But yeah, I've sort of worked out that like if what I'm doing is providing more value, if like I'm I'm giving a lot of value to people by doing my thing and like being friends with someone or like helping someone is getting in the way of it, then I have to like cut that off for the for the benefit of more people. That's how I look at it now. It's well, I mean, this 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 called being nice, but you got. I think a, a decent person knows the knows to give people limits, and you don't let like you don't put a fake niceness. Like what I see in this sometimes is I see. Oh, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna say that. Um, but what what I don't like is I don't like. Um, it's easy to be fake nice, but um, being a. Yeah, it's it's. What's the bit I'm getting at? Yeah, there's, there's, there's got to be limits and you've got to do things for yourself at the end of the day, whatever the situation is. Whatever you're being nice or whatever, you have to look, put yourself first. And that's it. Yeah. There's no ifs or buts, you have to. And you have to do what's... And you got to, If you don't feel like something's right, then don't, you don't fucking need to do it. Who gives a fuck? They don't like you if they're pieces, if they oh, you're this, you're that, or whatever. Tell yeah. them shit. That's it. I don't know. Well, yeah, you're right. But for me, like, I can't, like, I can't think of it like that because it's like too, it's too sort of selfish for me. So I can't think like that. So I, so I, I can do the same. Like, I can do the fuck off, but I have to think about it differently. I need to think about it more, like. Um, do I benefit one person by helping this person or do I benefit like 20 people by carry on like doing my work and sort of cutting this per other person out? That's how I look at it now. So I'm doing more good by doing that, by cutting the person out. I don't know. It's a bit, well, we've really gone into some very deep topics here, haven't we? <laughs> no, um, well, that's that's my that's my idea and things. I I like to try and be nice to people if possible, but I think sometimes in the past I've been a bit too nice to people, and people have mistaken it for other things. And I think, yeah, I, I think you just got. That's what I think at the end of the day. It's good to be nice to people. It's better to be friendly and kind to people, but. Yeah, sometimes you've got to put your foot down. Yeah, I think, yeah. You Yeah. But it's not, yeah, I don't think it's like you're putting your foot down for yourself. You're putting your foot down for other people because of, like, what, what you have to give, like, one person is getting in the way. That's, I think that's the better way to look at it. Uh, explain that like if you're say if someone's saying oh can you help me with my my project and you're like and you're working on something 
So you're like, say you're like successful and like you're creating something and like people say, oh, this is really inspiring me to do my own thing. And like you and like, like 20 people like message you that something like that. It's better for you to carry on doing your work and cut out that one person, mm. for the benefit of those sort of 20 people who have messaged you carry on doing your work mm. and cut out the one person who's asking you to help with their work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, ideally do both, but like, if you can't do both, then yeah. do, do the thing that's going to help the most amount of people. Mm. Or find a way where you could help that one person and help more people at the same time. So, like, you know, do you follow Gary V? Yeah, I like him. He's I like his work ethic. He's amazing. Yeah, he's good. But yeah, like he he helps individuals. I've noticed like he he records it on camera and makes a video out of it. So he's helping that one person who's like desperate for help. And probably won't might not get anywhere because they're like because they're being too selfish but like Gary Vee is like recording the conversation and like he's helping that person but he's also having it recorded so he can help anyone that watches the video as well mm. who has the same question yeah so that's like a way that you could you can help two people at the same time mm. you can help that one person and lots of other people yeah because i i'm i think what i'm saying is like that's what yes, makes yes, yes, it, yes. that's what makes you happy is helping people helping the right people no helping everyone i think it's helping though it's help, when when you yeah i think that's 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 yeah that's good what he does though because he's helping people that want to do something with their lives because they've gone out to look at his channel they're going to look at yeah. things so they've shown a lot of initiative and a lot of desire to do it and by giving that video, he's helping them, which is a good service to help society yeah. go forward. But for I see where you're coming from. It is annoying if, like, if people are distracting you. If someone comes and like is and wants you to like uh, do something for them, or is trying to like take things from you and isn't giving anything back. It's, I don't, yeah, it's the second point that I don't like. The first point, I'm not, like, I don't mind helping people, but it's, 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 if the, yeah, I don't like it when people try and take things, give nothing back. That's the big thing. Yeah. I think it's fair enough if you're, if you're in a position where you've got enough money and income, but if you're, like, trying to, like, if you're, if you're still, like, struggling to make money and stuff, like, you need to get your head above the water before you can stop someone else drowning. Yeah, that's the thing I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. another thing. Because I wouldn't say that I'm. Yeah, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily. I'm still working, building towards things, but yeah, I don't like the fact that someone's trying to get what I'm starting to learn, and they're trying to steal things off me, which I don't. I don't mind being in a thing where you're both helping each other and you're working towards something, but where it's just you helping them. And you're, so you're not in a position, that bigger position as well. And it's a bit... I don't My God, this has gotten deep. <laughs> Whoa. I've had I was, was going to have my YouTube channel was going to be called Philosophy. But like when I tried to sit down and do it to the camera, like I just couldn't think of anything to say. It's all right. I can do it if I'm talking to someone, but I can't do it if I'm on my own. Are you going to be free later on this week? Because I want to discuss maybe we'll do we'll, we'll prepare like a sketch or something, but we'll do it sort of very simple. We'll come up with a little script and then we'll improvise with each other, and then we'll yeah. upload it at some point. Yeah, we're doing that. Yeah, I find it's better if you come up with like a like don't write a script like come up with this the story with the jokes in and then improvise okay and then so, improvise it. 
that's how I was just saying like that's what Larry David does for for curb your enthusiasm mm. and that's what I've been doing now like, with my with my uh, little mini series what's it about what's the story I just write I write the story down and then I and then I improvise it mm. I um what what's it about um I should ask you what that right at the start. <laughs> yeah, have you seen it? I've seen bits and pieces of it. I've seen a bit where you take pictures of different people and you start doing accents. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I was doing like a thirty-day challenge. Uh, I was trying to do it. I'm doing a video every day for thirty days. This is day twenty-six. So this will be the video. This will be today's video. But, I'm, but like what's come out of it is I'm st I've started to do like a mini series of like a sort of drama with these little animated characters that live inside my brain. And then like that's one story. And then I have like my story with other characters and then they sort of intersect and overlap. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm halfway through doing that. Have you looked at your? How have you found like producing thirty videos in a day? How has it sort of gone for you as a whole? Thirty videos in a day. <laughs> thirty videos like in the every every yeah one a day. Yeah, I'm barely managing one a day. <laughs> um, I well I ha I had some like experience editing doing video editing and like like with film i did film at university oh okay but yeah like what i learned you could probably learn in like a few weeks anyway but like that that was a good starting point so i already knew how to, to do it and uh yeah i mean like it's been like school where like you there's periods where it's really easy like the i like the ideas come and it's and it's fun to do and then there's there were days where it was like I had no ideas and I felt really shit and I was like on the brink of not doing a video mm. I was like almost in tears how hard it was and that lasted like that last maybe two or three days and then I'm like back and then it's it's just like waves, it's like good and then bad. Do you, I noticed that what a lot of YouTube video makers do is they have a day where they shoot all the videos and then they upload them. They don't like just do it every day. They they decide that there's a day they're going to do this and that. Yeah, in hindsight, that would have been a good idea. Because <laughs> now I, I have to film it all separately on each day. Because like I... Like I, when I started it, I filmed like I filmed everything the day before, and then I uploaded it in the morning the next day. But like I went through that a rough patch where I didn't have anything, and then I had a day where I didn't didn't do a video. So like I ha I'm uploading them in the evening now. So I do them on in I start in the mo sort of afternoon and then upload in the evening but like after this 30 days i'm gonna yeah i'll probably do that i'll film it all in two days and then like upload them i'm interested i might try something later on in a week i'm gonna try and tell you what um let's let's end the podcast and we'll talk off screen yeah. <laughs> let's do that yeah <laughs>